San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office makes a big arrest in a major child abuse case. The proposal that could bring Americans detained in Russia home. I'm Jay O'Brien, who the U.S. wants to trade for Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. Coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 78 degrees for now. Those lingering clouds helped yesterday. Let's see what happens today. And good morning to you. It is Thursday, July 28th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. What a treat. Some of those clouds sticking around. It really helped out. I don't even know what we got up to yesterday, Mike goes for Hage, but you're here now and you can answer some questions 99. for it. 99. Yeah. Oh, hey, so that did help. So, yeah, it, it, so there's the example that now we're, everything is set to hit 100. And just because of the clouds, we stayed slightly below that. So in other words, you know, you, you keep there's clearer skies around. We're going to be hitting 100. It's much easier to do that. And a few coastal showers actually yeah. made their way into parts of our viewing area. And that is going to be the situation again today. I mean, like uh, like the situation yesterday, don't get excited about rain chances, but at least there are going to be a couple of them out there. We've got a few clouds this morning, a lot of clear skies as of right now. And uh, we do actually have a couple of these showers showing up down here along the coastal plain trying to slide up to the north. If one or two of them decides to scooch a little bit further to the west, that's going to be great. But most of these will be confined even throughout the rest of today down here to the uh, southeast. At least there's that little disturbance coming in here. So like I said, at least some folks get a, a tiny bit of rain. 79 right now, 78 in uh, Divine, 81 Castorville, 79 Canyon Lake. And humidity is it's there about the same as what it was yesterday at this time. So a slight bit of a, a heat index 84 right now. Castroville 82 at the airport also there in Hondo and mold is on the low side. It did drop down from yesterday's reading. We are going to make it up to again the kind of standard right now. Just given the fact the ground is so dry and the way everything is setting up is 100. If we keep a couple extra clouds around here, we stay just slightly below that one or two of those showers off to the east and a, a, a bit of a breeze. So we are Obviously fast approaching the end of the month and the start of August. Any changes coming up? Details in just a couple of minutes. Quick check on traffic right now. And there was a rollover earlier this morning. Still, uh, it's going on eastbound Wurzbach Parkway at Vista Norte. Police say that uh, three individuals, two males, one female, were both were all three transported, and that's still in the clearing stages. Jonathan Coto is out there right now, and he's going to have a report throughout the rest of this morning. And more on the forecast coming up. Steph, Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. Well, other top stories this morning. Uh, the Bear County Sheriff's Office has a 76 year old man accused of sexually abusing a child over the course of several years is now in custody. DCSO says back in May, the victim reported the instance and accused the suspect Gilbert Casanova of sexual assault. After an investigation, the Bear County Sheriff's Office arrested Casanova Tuesday. Investigators say they also found Casanova was in possession of and had distributed child pornography. He faces a charge of continuous sexual abuse of a child, a first degree felony. Casanova, you see there, now in the Bear County Jail on a $100,000 bond. The investigation into this case remains ongoing. He was caught on camera pulling an employee's hair. Case and Investigates has now learned that Juan Cortez, who is a supervisor at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center, was allowed to return to work. Now, that incident happened back in August, and documents confirmed that firing Cortez was an option, but the punishment was shortened to just five days. The city says they stand by their discipline decision. Nearly a year later, police arrested Cortez on the assault charge. He is out on bond and is due in court next month. His attorney has not released a statement, but more women have come forward with more complaints against Cortez. In the morning headlines, the FBI says the man accused of trying to kill Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh said in an online conversation he was, quote, shooting for three justices. The FBI search warrant application also says Nicholas Roski researched assassination methods before his June 8th arrest. Prosecutors say he went to Kavanaugh's Maryland home that day with an extra pistol uh, a pistol, extra ammunition, and other gear. Vesca say Roski told them he was upset over Kavanaugh's position on guns and the leaked Supreme Court draft opinion overturning Roe versus Wade. Roski has pleaded not guilty to the charge of attempting to assassinate a U.S. justice. In New York, a 70 year old woman was mauled to death by the family dog. Now, police described that scene as horrific. 
It happened on Wednesday at a home on Long Island. The woman's husband told police when he returned home from work, he found the dog dragging his wife through the backyard. When police got there, they say the seven-year-old dog turned on them, and that's when one of the officers shot and killed the dog. Police say they have no reports of any previous incidents regarding that dog. Economists will be looking closely at today's Commerce Department GDP report for signs on the health of the nation's economy. This U.S. Uh, this U.S. may register a second straight quarter. Uh, the U.S. may be registering a second straight quarter of economic contraction, meaning a possible recession. However, the White House is citing the country's growth in job creation and the falling unemployment rate as signs that we are supposedly not heading into a recession. Today's economic numbers come as the Fed raised interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point yesterday in an effort to tame inflation. Well, now to Washington, where the U.S. is proposing a prisoner swap with Russia to bring home Americans Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. Sources tell ABC News that President Biden has approved trading an infamous Russian arms dealer to secure the two Americans' release. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more from Washington. This morning, Russia is considering what the White House calls a substantial proposal to secure the release of American detainees Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. Sources confirming to ABC News the U.S. is offering a prisoner swap, proposing trading infamous Russian arms dealer Victor Boot to bring the two Americans home. Boot, nicknamed the Merchant of Death, is currently serving a 25-year sentence at this federal prison in Illinois, convicted of selling weapons to terrorists. Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying he'll press for the potential deal with Russia's foreign minister later this week in their first call since Russia invaded Ukraine. We put a substantial proposal on the table weeks ago to facilitate their release. Our governments have communicated repeatedly and directly on that proposal. Paul Whelan, a former Marine, has been detained in Russia for more than three years, convicted on espionage charges, which he denies. I want to tell the world that I'm a, 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 a victim of political kidnap and ransom. And Brittany Griner, a WNBA star and two-time Olympic gold medalist, is accused of illegally bringing cannabis oil into Russia. In court again yesterday, Griner insisting she made a mistake. I did not plan or have the intent to bring any cannabis or banned substance to Russia. Testifying earlier this week, the basketball star jailed for more than five months, holding up pictures of her wife and teammates. Russia has suggested it wants to see Griner's trial play out before agreeing to any deal, but the U.S. and the Kremlin have done prisoner exchanges before, most recently bringing American Trevor Reed home. Last month, Reed and his parents told ABC News that trading Victor Boot would be worth it to bring Griner and Whelan home. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 438, 78 degrees. And coming up next, we are checking out who showed up on the first official day of practice at Cowboys training camp in California. Traffic authority right now, and uh, it's kind of a team effort this morning. Mike is telling us more about that incident right now. Wurzbach Parkway near Vista del Norte, an incident that remains under investigation, I believe affecting, was it the eastbound Wurzbach Parkway, yeah, Mike Ostrage? Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. And a quick look outside with a live pan starting at 78 degrees. Not too bad and almost not too bad yesterday with that cloud cover. Let's see what we can expect today. Maybe a few showers, but not in our immediate viewing area. We'll be right back. Camping with KZAP, powered by Davis Law Firm. It was the first workout day for the Cowboys at training camp in Oxnard, California. When it first hit the field, star running back Ezekiel Elliott headed right to the fan zone to give them some love. He is coming off another 1,000-yard rushing season. That's despite having to play the last three months with a nagging injury to his right knee. Now he says he's reporting to camp 100%, but not without cause for concern before. You know, I was a little, a little worried uh, at the beginning of the offseason. I'm like, dang, you know, this thing still kind of feels a little, a little iffy. But uh, I'll say probably, you know, a month or two into the offseason, a month or two getting back into work. And, uh, and uh, I'll say, you know, probably... By the time OTAs hit, um, I, I was back 100.
Camp continues and KSAT is there. Right, look who paid a visit to the Spurs Sports Academy at the McDermott Center on the campus of the University of Incarnate Word. New face of the franchise, Keldon Johnson and assistant coach Matt Nielsen. They saw an autograph and answered questions for the Spurs overnight campers. Also our first chance to visit with Keldon since signing his four year $80 million contract extension. I know my parents are very emotional. I was emotional. Uh, it kind of felt like a, a dream, like it wasn't real, you know, um, something that, that hit home like that. You know, you work so hard, put so much into basketball, and see, it, see a big award like that is definitely big. San Antonio Missions baseball on the road in Midland taking on the Rockhound. San Antonio took an early lead in the first inning. However, the Rockhound slowly made a comeback. A solo homer, solo homer gave Midland a 3-2 lead heading into the final inning. Missions managed to load the bases top of the ninth, but left everyone on. Rockhounds get another win with a score of 3-2, to two, and that is a very quick look at morning sports. Very good. Well, time now, 443 and 78 degrees for now. Coming up next, the latest on a popular singer who is canceling his world tour to focus on his mental health. And welcome back. It's 445. Singer Shawn Mendes is now canceling his world tour to focus on his mental health. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, pop superstar Shawn Mendes calling off the rest of his Wonder World Tour to focus on his mental health. The singer-songwriter writing in a note to fans, As you guys know, I had to postpone the past few weeks of shows since I wasn't totally prepared for the toll that being back on the road would take on me. After speaking more with my team and working with an incredible group of health professionals, it has become more clear that I need to take the time I've never taken personally. Mendez has been candid about his mental health struggles in the past, opening up about them in his 2018 hit In My Blood. Laying on the bathroom floor, feeling nothing. I'm overwhelmed and insecure. The star now taking the time to face his challenges head on. It's important for individuals to recognize that they need time off without guilt and without shame. And we'll have more on when the superstar might return to the stage coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide at 447 this morning. There's a look there at I-35 at New Braunfels where things are looking good. Some of the other cameras look good, but we do have a situation this morning. That's right. A Jonathan Cotto live on the north side up on Wurzbach Parkway near Blanco Road with the very latest. Jonathan. That's right, Mark. I'm actually off of Vista del Norte at this moment. Uh, police are telling us that three young adults were involved in this terrible crash here this morning. I'll step outside of the camera that way you can take a closer look at what this scene looks like at your distance. What's left of that vehicle totally mangled in those trees. Now, San Antonio police did arrive shortly after three o'clock this morning. Again, those three young adults inside of that vehicle, two males, one female. They say they were exiting the ramp, were driving too fast and rolled into the trees you see there on your screen. And uh, if you notice here on your right side, there's an apartment complex. So luckily here this morning, that vehicle did not impact the apartment community. Uh, it came very close to, but it did not. So that's the good news this morning. Also, all three of those young adults inside the vehicle did make it out okay. They were able to crawl out from one of the windows uh, of that vehicle. They were taken to University Hospital. We're told they are expected to be okay. Reporting live from the north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you very much. Again, this is affecting Wurzbach Parkway eastbound uh, near Vista del Norte, just east of Blanco. Yes, and time now for 48. Time to check in with Mike. And Mike, uh, I know we didn't get like a big rain or anything, but just those few clouds were kind of helpful in the afternoon. Yeah, it, it certainly made a whole lot of difference because, again, the way things are set up right now, it's kind of like 100 is almost the standard. And then if something changes, we stay below that. If we get a couple of extra clouds, we stay below that. And that's going to be the situation again today. Beautiful uh, sunrise over Peach Creek, Gonzales County yesterday. Great picture, love that. And uh, today we're starting off with the mostly clear skies right now, but we'll see some of our morning clouds developing. So we're still at 47 days and counting, still at, uh, at third place. And as it's going right now, it would be, again, dependent upon the clouds, but it would be next Saturday that we would hit um, 
It, the uh, 57 degrees or 57 days. I'm boy, I keep saying that. I think it's wishful thinking. And then 59 would be on uh, the following Monday. All right, got a couple of showers that are showing up on radar as of right now down here to the southeast. And these aren't going to I mean, if you're getting one of these showers, great, but they're not going to amount to too much. But what this is, is just the indication that, yes, we are getting some of these disturbances coming in here off the, the Gulf of Mexico. And that's what we're hoping for. But of course, most of that is going to be staying down there along the coastal plain. 99 yesterday same thing you valley but then you know where there wasn't a lot of cloud cover 103 pleasant and 104 in Catula, and it's going to be a similar situation again today going for 100 if clouds hang out then we stay just below that but most all of the metropolitan area is going to be and even in your backyard maybe up to 100 degrees 78 uh, this morning so we'll stay fairly steady with some of these clouds developing and then make it up through the 80s throughout the uh, late morning hours and go for partly cloudy skies today and yes 100 high temperature but that 10 percent chance for one or two of those showers to pop up so here's the uh, rapid update computer model going into the afternoon hours and some of these showers well off here to the east uh one or two of them maybe popping up here or there and again it's going to be just very, very hit or miss. I don't even know if that would uh, describe it that well. And then tomorrow, a couple of those showers are going to be popping up later on in the afternoon as well. As a matter of fact, a couple of computer models want to try and get some out here in the Hill Country tomorrow evening. That'd be great if that happens. But once the sun goes down, a lot of these will uh, have kind of trouble sort of hanging together in there. But at least there's that small chance for rain. Don't get too excited about it. And temperatures will stay somewhat in check. Just pray for the clouds. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies and then high temperature today again makes it up to 100. A couple more clouds. We stay just uh, just below that and a couple of showers off to the east and then over the next few days we will continue to you know rack up triple digit temperatures. If there are a few more clouds, it would be today and tomorrow be probably the best chances to stay slightly below 100. But then boy, it's back to the low hundreds by the middle of next week. How desperate are we for rain here in Texas? A station down in the valley sent a reporter out yesterday to do a live report about the fact that they had a rain shower. It's big news. It is huge news. <laughs> Headline making these days. Right? A lot of people were putting they go, oh my gosh, look at the look at oh, there was rain off in the distance, you know. Yes. And, I mean, we were thankful just for clouds. You yes. bet. You bet. At this we, point. <laughs> we hope some more people win the rain lottery today. Yep. 452, about 78 degrees. And coming up next, the next Avengers movie gets its director plus a Martin Scorsese show on Apple TV plus gets delayed. Lottery numbers this morning pick three, two, four, five, fireball zero, daily four, three, two, eight, nine, fireball three. Cash five, four, 10, 11, 15, 31, Lotto, Texas, six, eight, 10, 14, 44, 46. And those Powerball numbers, 1, 25, 44, 55, 57, Powerball 26, Power Play 2. Marvel gets a new director for its next Avengers film. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Matt Wolf. Assemble. Marvel Studios' next Avengers film has its director, Destin Daniel Cretton. Director of Marvel's hit Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, he'll helm Avengers The Kang Dynasty. The first of two new Avengers films announced at Comic-Con. Look for that in 2025. Marvel Studios and ABC News are both owned by parent company Disney. Looking for Martin Scorsese's much-anticipated Killers of the Flower Moon on Apple TV Plus this year? Well, it's not coming until 2023. Possibly debuting at the Cannes Film Festival, it's the adaptation of the best-selling novel. It'll star Leonardo DiCaprio and Jesse Plemons. NBC's Peacock giving a straight-to-series order for the Gladiator Ancient Rome period piece for those about to die. Independence Day director Roland Emmerich will direct and executive produce. That goes into production next year. I keep messing up my love life. Usher signing on to executive produce Storyville. According to Variety, it's a new series about the birth of modern jazz set in New Orleans. Matt Wolf, ABC News. 456, about 78 degrees. And still ahead, an update on the economy as lawmakers in Washington discuss a new health care bill that also aims to lower inflation. And you have an iPhone, an Apple Watch. So how about an Apple car? We have details coming up in Tech Bites.
Interesting, no Apple cars on the road right now. Looking out at I-35 at New Braunfels where things are moving. Uh, we'll be checking in with Jonathan Cotto a little later about the crash that happened off of Warsbach Parkway. We'll be right back. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, economists will be keeping a watchful eye on today's Commerce Department GDP report amid fears of a possible recession. It is not a fib to say that we did not reach 100 degrees yesterday around here, which is pretty shocking for late July. We'll talk to Mike coming up. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. That would be July 28th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, I enjoyed the cloud cover, and I, I want to say I actually felt a little bit of breeze in the shade, and it almost seemed nice. And you would know you spent part of the day outside yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I sure did. It was kind of nice. Not My, too bad. Mike? Yeah, 99 in July 2022. Yeah, that is definitely an anomaly. But uh, the breeze, like Mark always describes it, did not feel like a hairdryer yesterday. So that was nice. Those clouds were just wonderful. Um, and then, but you look at the fact that we stayed below 100 because we had some of those clouds out there. So the way things are still, the way the, the whole weather pattern is set up and with the extremely dry ground, it's like 100 is the standard. And if we get some clouds, we stay below that. 78 degrees right now, a few clouds out there. Dew points at 72, which means, yeah, there's a fair amount of uh, humidity as you step outside this morning. We are going to make it up to 100. That's forecast high. You get some clouds, we stay just slightly below that. Of course, the normal average high temperature is 96 degrees, but Boy, that's sure in the situation this uh, this year and the aquifer dropped down three tenths of a foot. Of course, check with your local uh, municipality for any watering restrictions or what they are. And mold is on the low side. All right, got a couple of we had a couple of showers pop up yesterday. There are one or two of them out there right there along the coastal plain. And as you can see, everything is sliding just straight up to the north. And obviously, uh, other than the, the fringes of Victoria, nothing's going to be moving into our area this morning. But this is just a, a good example or an indication that yes, they have a similar situation to yesterday. These little kind of waves coming in here, little weaknesses in the atmosphere coming in from the, the Gulf of Mexico. So there will be one or two of them again today, but primarily off to the east, as was the situation yesterday. But hopefully throw in a couple of more clouds our direction. 80 is the heat index right now. 81 Castroville, 83 up the road at Canyon Lake. And yeah, warm, humid. Some clouds hanging around this morning. Those couple of showers well off to the east. And then 100, a shower east, breezy, sort of like yesterday. Same thing tomorrow. That very small chance for a couple of showers around here. Then we go on into the weekend. Still hot. But then on top of that, we're going to have a little bit of uh, Saharan dust hanging around here. What's in store for the 1st of August? Yeah, that starts Monday, believe it or not. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. We do have an incident over there on the uh, near north side. Wurzbach Parkway, a rollover incident. And out there live is Jonathan Cota with the very latest. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Mike. Thank you very much. That's right. I'm located right off of Vista del Norte, off of Wurzbach Parkway, where San Antonio police are investigating a crash involving three young adults. You can take a look on your screen. This is what the scene is looking like right now. They're telling us they responded to this crash shortly after 3 o'clock. Again, this happening off Vista del Norte and Wurzbach Parkway. They're telling us the driver of this vehicle was exiting on the ramp. Uh, speed was a factor in this crash when uh, the, the vehicle here on your screen crashed into the trees. Now, fortunately, it did not make it any further because it is right next to an apartment community. So that could have been uh, a worse situation here this morning. But thankfully, firefighters did respond. They were able to cut out a window in that vehicle. All three passengers were able to safely make it out of what's left of this vehicle here. This is involving three young adults, two males and one female. We're learning they were taken to University Hospital and are expected to be OK. But for those morning commuters, commuters, if you're expecting to get on Wurzbach Parkway eastbound off of Vista del Norte, you may want to look for an alternative route. It's unclear how long the, the on-ramp here will be closed off for. Reporting live on the city's north side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. Now to more late breaking news. San Antonio police say a group expecting a friendly meetup instead has been met with some unfriendly behavior. They say someone shot at their car hitting a teenage girl. Police are still investigating this overnight shooting, which happened on the northwest side near I-10 in Woodstone. Katrina Weber is live at the scene. And Katrina, you say there's quite a widespread scene. 
Well, there is indeed. We have police all over this area. We also had an area of this parking lot where just until a few minutes ago, there were uh, evidence markers all over there, all marking off shell casings. There had to be more than a dozen there in the parking lot. This is where the shooting happened, but it's not where they found the victims. Uh, they say that after the shooting, the person who was driving the victim's car went down the road toward De Zavala and then put the three, put the victim out, the one who was shot, as well as two other teenage girls, put them out of the car and left them there. Now, the girl who was shot is in critical condition. They told police what happened is they were in the car with a man driving here on Woodstone when another car pulled in front of them. They thought it was someone who they knew. Uh, someone in that other car got out and then started shooting at them. A teenage girl who was in the back seat was hit in the chest. And again, she's the one who is now in critical condition at the hospital. There were two other girls in that back seat with her, and those are the ones that were also put out. Uh, paramedics, again, found all three teens down the road uh, outside a furniture store, and that is where they picked up the one who was shot and took her to the hospital. Police still trying to gather evidence or information on the shooters. All they know is that there was a beige uh, sedan that was involved in this, and that's uh, all the information they have at this point about the shooters. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A man is facing punishment after being found guilty of trafficking a 16-year-old girl back in 2020. Now, today begins the punishment phase in the trial of Xavier Green. The teen victim is now 18 years old. She took the stand this week saying she ran away from home and met Green and another man. She says they took her to an abandoned apartment off of Blanco Road and eventually forced her into prostitution. Green's lawyer had argued that the teen lied about her age and was never held against her will. The other man involved in this case has already taken a plea deal. A memorial service was held on Quintana Road last night where 53 people died in the worst human smuggling tragedy in the country. The service started with a prayer in both English and in Spanish. Speakers called for people to have compassion and love for people who are coming to the United States seeking a better life. Bear County Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores spoke about fighting for migrant rights, saying at County Commissioner's last meeting, they passed $1 million to help with legal aid for migrants, organizers hope visit and then push for change. We are more united than we, we believe and that we can turn tragedy into a story of hope and that these migrants did not die in vain. This is where we pivot. I'm making sure of that. At the memorial, there are 53 crosses on display as well as the faces and names of the victims. Martinez says she's working on a book to honor their stories. This morning, a killer is still on the run after two cousins were shot and killed. Now, this happened Saturday morning in the 1800 block of Shelley Street, southeast of downtown. Family members are now pleading with the community to help them find the people responsible. Now, one of the family members says the teens were just exploring their newly found freedom of learning to drive. Police don't have any leads right now. If you have any information on those murders, you are asked to call the San Antonio Police Department. Turning to the release of a crucial economic report, in just hours, experts are forecasting the quarterly report will show a second straight decline of growth. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details. Today, the Commerce Department releases its much-anticipated report revealing whether America's economy is in a recession, depending who you ask. The report could show America's gross domestic product in the negative for a second consecutive quarter. Some economists say that's technically a recession. But the White House disagrees, highlighting areas of strength, including job growth. Right now, we're seeing that strong labor market with about 400,000 jobs that have been created each month. Uh, we see unemployment at 3.6. The way that we see is that we are not currently in a recession or uh, a pre-recession. It comes after the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point yesterday, the fourth rate hike this year. Now, there are some indications the rate increases are working toward the Fed's goal to slow down the amount Americans are spending in order to ease the record high inflation. The slowdown in home sales, consumer spending starting to pull back a little bit, even consumer confidence now lower for the third straight month. Fed Chair Jerome Powell admits it's a difficult task. We're not trying to have a recession and we don't think we have to. We think that there's a path for us to be able to bring inflation down while sustaining a strong labor market. And this morning, gas prices, a major contributor to inflation, are still falling, down 60 cents from a month ago. 
Meanwhile, back on Capitol Hill, a major win for the Biden administration's economic agenda. In a major reversal, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin says he will back an energy and health care bill, spending $369 billion on energy and climate initiatives and raising taxes on big corporations and the wealthy. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 509, 77 degrees. Facebook is experiencing another first in its company, but it's not a good thing. We're going to explain. Up next, why Bear County Sheriff's Office is warning teens about participating in a TikTok challenge involving a unique kind of water gun. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 77 degrees. We're expecting a very stray shower to the east later today, uh, but we'll take what we can get at this point. We'll be right back. 513 from a viral prank to a problem with the law. Four kids stopped for shooting at people with a type of water gun that shoots gel beads. Bear County deputies say while they look harmless, they can still cause injuries. And the sheriff's office is reporting that a TikTok trend has kids doing drive-bys with the water guns shooting at people. This week, they caught a 15-year-old, two 14-year-olds, and an 11-year-old in a parent's car. That car was seized. Two of the minors now face charges of injury to a child, a felony along with assault bodily injury, which is a class A misdemeanor. One man we spoke with says a similar incident happened to his daughter at the beginning of the summer. She's running up the block, screaming and crying. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to console her and make sure she's all right. So it's pretty emotional. The father says when his daughter was hit, the gel beads were frozen in order to cause more harm. However, the sheriff's office tells us that they do not believe the beads were frozen in the most recent incident. They warn those who take part in the trend will be arrested and their car will be seized. 514, 77 degrees. And can video games be bad for your mental health? What a new report from the University of Oxford is now saying. And could an Apple car soon be sitting in your driveway? We have details next. It takes energy to take on the world. So whether you're breaking a sweat, breaking down barriers, or breaking the laws of gravity, keep moving with the ultimate energy bar. We bake in delicious, wholesome ingredients, purposefully crafted with a blend of protein, fat, and carbs. Because the more good you put in, the more great you get out. Cliff, baked in goodness. Now introducing Cliff Thins, a crispy, craveable 100-calorie snack. Nurse Mariam Sabo knows a moment this pure demands a lotion this pure. Gold Bond Pure Moisture Lotion, 24-hour hydration. No parabens, dyes, or fragrances. Gold Bond, champion your skin. Just between us, cleaning with a mop and bucket is such a hassle. Ugh. Well, I switched to Swiffer Wet Jet, and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one that absorbs dirt and grime deep inside. And it helps prevent streaks and haze. Stop cleaning and start Swiffering. In today's Tech Bites, an unwanted first for Facebook. Its parent company, Meta, just reported a quarterly decline in revenue for the first time since going public a decade ago. Also, it's now seen profits drop for three straight quarters. Analysts say it's the result of slowing digital ad sales. Good news for gamers, a new study from Oxford finds that time spent playing video games has no effect on mental health. Instead of relying on questionnaires, Oxford researchers track the actual gameplay of more than 40,000 individual players. Apple is apparently stepping up efforts to roll out its own self-driving electric vehicle. The company reportedly hired a veteran executive from Lamborghini. Bloomberg says he'll be a senior manager on the project and help design the Apple car. An Apple car. I wonder if it comes with windows. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> that was cute. You going to give yeah. him that one? Yeah. I Mike joins us now with a look at traffic but I had and said further maybe, commentary. Maybe some of the models could be, you know, you get the Granny Smith package uh -huh. or right. the, the Red Mac Delicious. Macintosh. <laughs> okay, here's traffic right now, and uh, there's no problems on any of the main lanes as of right now. And looking around with some of the TransGuide cameras, everything is uh, appears to be moving along very well. There is an uh, incident in the cleanup stages there over on Wurzbach Parkway eastbound, right around Vista del Norte, Blanco Road area. A car was exiting Wurzbach Parkway, 
way too fast and it did roll over, went into some trees there. Three people were okay, but they were transported to the uh, hospital and they're just in the cleanup stages right over there. So again, that was uh, Wurzbach Parkway eastbound on the exit ramp over there by Vista Del Norte, uh, right around Blanco Road area. I'm sorry, I was confused by something. Okay, Mike, <laughs> thank you for jumping over to yes, there thank you. Uh, right now. So uh, some folks may see some more rain today. Uh, here or yes. there? One or two of them. Yeah, the, the short answer is yes, but the, the long answer is most of us aren't going to be seeing any rain today. Most will be confined off to these, kind of like was the situation yesterday. A few extra clouds here. If we get a couple of extra clouds, like uh, seeing in this picture, no rain, but... Uh, and nice sunset and also kept temperatures down to 99. It's so funny how we're so excited about 99, but um, we'll take anything we can get. We've got some clear skies. Uh, you can see a few of these clouds that are starting to move on in here. We'll have some of our morning clouds, obviously. And uh, also we're going to be looking at more Saharan dust. This is going to start to work its way on in here. And if you can grab that to gray clicker for me over there on the table, please. And I would appreciate it. We will see this uh, kind of coming on in. You can see a couple of big plumes over here in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. And then this is coming across the intertropical conversion zone. And we'll be, thank you very much, coming on in. And it looks like nothing around here today, nor really tomorrow. But then as we go into tomorrow night, uh, we'll start to see some of that. So over the weekend, yeah, we're going to have those really orangey kind of sunrises as well as uh, sunsets around here. All right, here's what's going on on Red radar right now. We do have a few of these showers that are showing up there off to the uh, east and to the southeast along the coastal plain. Now, none of this is really going to have any uh, impact at all on our weather this morning, but it's just an indication that well, like yesterday, we've got these little waves, little weaknesses in the atmosphere, or to put it another way, that high pressure is not just like plunked down right on top of us and pushing down in the atmosphere. So we at least are seeing some of these showers pop up this morning. We'll see one or two of them later on today. 78 here in town right now. Humidity is OK. You'll be greeted by that. So a little bit of a, a heat index to deal with and temperatures will keep some of these morning clouds around and then obviously work it way into the upper 80s, 90 at noon. Sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. And again, the almost the you have to say it seems like the normal these past few weeks has been 100. That's the benchmark and then we go from there. So if we keep a couple of clouds around, then we stay just below 100 today like yesterday, but that 10% chance for one or two of these uh, showers to uh, pop up and at least we're going to have the dew points drop down. So heat index is not going to be just outrageously high later on today. Once again, 90 at noon and partly cloudy skies a shower or two here and there. Decent little breeze and hopefully it doesn't feel too much like a hair dryer today like Mark always describes it 100 and one or two of those showers are popping up here or there. Same thing tomorrow and then we get the Saharan dust over the weekend and by the way uh, Sunday begins the about 16 day period 17 day period of 97 for a normal high temperature and then on the second it's with the warmest low temperature mixed in there and that at, at last for about uh, 11 days or so. So we're getting into the hottest period of the year. Yes, we go are. figure. And we were <laughs> already kind of there. We've already been there. <laughs> yes, we have months. So 523 about 77 degrees and coming up next in your morning spotlight. Daniel Radcliffe's Weird Al movie gets a release date and a first look at Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. 526, Daniel Radcliffe trades in his Harry Potter glasses for some much larger ones for his upcoming movie role. CNN's Rick Damagella has that story and more in the Hollywood Minute. Hope you guys are ready for this. It's time to get weird. Roku has revealed the release date for Weird, the Al Yankovic story starring Daniel Radcliffe as the bespectacled accordion player. The biopic debuts on the Roku channel November 4th. I want to tell you a story. It's a story you may think you know, but you don't. Netflix has released a preview of Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. The stop-motion animated film stars the voices of Ewan McGregor, Gregory Mann, David Bradley, and Tilda Swinton. The film will play in select theaters in November before streaming on Netflix in December. A pair of 
of milestones for Rick Astley. The pop singer's hit Never Gonna Give You Up celebrates its 35th anniversary this week and has achieved five times platinum status according to the RIAA. Rick rolling you in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. <laughs> Even people still waking up or in bed would just kind of just did. Yeah. Yeah. Be the <laughs> earworm, for the, earworm for the day. <laughs> His voice never. No, nah, but I, I, I think that's part of the reason he was successful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 528, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, what new numbers are revealing about the number of school kids who are expected to return to class this year unvaccinated? Plus, Coca-Cola getting rid of uh, Sprite's iconic green bottle. We'll tell you when and why. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. There are two serious issues our military men and women are facing right now, and that's unemployment and underemployment. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you exactly what we mean by underemployment and what resources are available to veterans and transitioning service members. Making headlines this morning, top health officials say millions of U.S. school children are expected to go back to class this year unvaccinated. And taking a look outside with live cam. Good morning. It's 77 degrees. Not too bad. And enjoy that temperature while it lasts. Thanks for starting your day with us here on GMSA. It's Thursday, the 28th. Thank you for joining us today again. Uh, I hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, pretty much it's been kind of a hot week, but yesterday we got a little, little bit of a break. Yeah, we, we had a few showers kind of pop up and kind of hang around in the latter part of the day. Here's Mike with more on that and I hope that the trend will continue. Well, the trend will continue for a couple of showers out there. Uh, don't get excited about that. But the other nice thing was uh, for those of us that didn't see any rain, at least there were some of those clouds out there. So you didn't have the sun just beaten down on us mercilessly. And also that helped keep temperatures 99 as opposed to 100. So we kind of broke the uh, the latest streak of 11 days in a row at triple digit temperatures. 78 right now, 72 dew points, so fair amount of humidity out there. An okay breeze out of the south primarily, right around 11 miles per hour. We'll have a, a breeze or so throughout the day today, like yesterday. Here's those couple of showers down to the southeast. Obviously, this has no impact on our weather this morning, but it's just in the example that we're in the similar situation as yesterday with these little weaknesses in the atmosphere coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico to give us these couple of showers here. And that'll be the situation like we're talking about later on today. Mold is on the low side. It had dropped down from yesterday's reading. And yeah, 100, that's sort of the benchmark nowadays because of the way all the conditions are, the, the ground being so bone dry and everything going on in the atmosphere. So you that's then then you vary from there. So if we get some clouds, we stay just below 100 degrees again today. We've got that 10% chance for a couple of showers around here. Same situation tomorrow weekend. We'll talk about that. Got some uh, something else coming in here for the weekend and then we'll also look ahead to the first couple of days of August that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority and there's nothing going on right now in any of the major highways. Wurzbach Parkway eastbound. Now it's not on the main lanes, but on the exit ramp. There was a car earlier this morning took the exit ramp way too fast, flipped over Pardon me, producer. He oh, he's talking to you. OK, beg your pardon. And there are 35 at Maine. Everything's moving along very well. But that was on the exit ramp near uh, eastbound Wurzbach, Vista del Norte near Blanco Road. And again, that's in the cleanup stages right now. But just looking around in some of the other uh, trans guide cameras, nothing is going on. We will keep you updated throughout the rest of the morning. Thank you, Mike. Updating late breaking news. San Antonio police say someone fired at a car more than a dozen times. and At least one shot found a target in a teenage girl. She was hit in the chest. The shooting happened as she traveled along Woodstone near Interstate 10. Katrina Weber has a live report from the scene and Katrina, it looks like police have taken down their crime scene tape. Are there any closer to finding that shooter? I spoke to a sergeant a little while ago and he says they really don't have a lot of information about whoever did the shooting. All they, the only description they had is a beige four-door four car involved in the shooting. Now, this happened about 2.30 this morning. We still have a few officers here at the scene, but for the most part they have uh, exhausted this area in terms of looking for evidence. But let me show you the video so you can see how widespread this crime scene was. They had more than a dozen evidence markers down on the ground here in this parking lot along Woodstone near I-10. This is where the shooting happened, but they say this is not where they found the victims. Now, they say they were told the victims, uh, victim was a teenage girl 
in the back seat of a car along with three other people. They were traveling along Woodstone when another car pulled in front of them. Someone got out and started shooting at their car. That teenage girl was hit in the chest. She was in critical condition as she went to a hospital. Now, police say that the man who was driving the car with the victim then went down the road toward De Zavala, pulled into a parking lot there and put the victim along with two other teenage girls out of the car and left them there. That's where police found the victim again, taken to a hospital in critical condition. They've been here at the scene trying to piece together things and collect whatever physical evidence they can about whoever is responsible for this, but no arrest at this time. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 535 August is right around the corner. That means millions of kids will start returning to classrooms. This comes as COVID cases are rising nationwide, fueled by the BA5 subvariant. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, new research shows that many of these students are still not fully vaccinated against the virus. School is back in session in Newington, Connecticut, where students and teachers were greeted with signs saying facial coverings are necessary for most of the day. Coming back, it's going to be great to see them and their smiling faces Well, when we take mass breaks, but um, to, just to get to learn with them instead of being through a computer for face to face. According to a new CNN analysis, less than 50% of children and teenagers are fully vaccinated against COVID-19, with only about 10% getting booster shots. That's a trend the Biden administration would like to change. Every person aged five and over should get a booster shot. But a survey released Tuesday by KFF shows 37% of parents with children between five and 11 years old say they will not get their kids vaccinated. 28% of those with 12 to 17 year olds say the same. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization is calling on people of all ages to roll up their sleeves. If significant numbers of health workers, older people, and other at-risk groups remain unvaccinated, deaths will continue, health systems will remain under pressure, and the global recovery will be at risk. This is not theoretical. This is real. I'm John Lawrence reporting. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has warned he's ready to use his nuclear weapons in potential military conflicts with the United States and South Korea. State media reported Kim made such a warning in a speech marking the 69th anniversary of the end of the 1950-53 to Korean War. Some experts say Kim's threats were apparently meant to boost internal unity in the impoverished country suffering from pandemic-related economic difficulties. Some observers expect more North Korean threats before the U.S. and South Korea hold military drills the North views as an invasion rehearsal. Senate lawmakers have passed a $52 billion bill to boost the production of semiconductors. Now, the vote received broad bipartisan support yesterday. The legislation is aimed at addressing a semiconductor chip shortage. It also seeks to make the U.S. less reliant on other countries like China for manufacturing. A House vote on the bill and the president's signature are still needed for it to be approved. 538, 77 degrees. And still ahead, why Sprite will soon no longer be sold in its iconic green bottles. And new details on a possible airline buyout involving JetBlue and Spirit Airlines. Quick look outside with live cam. We are at 77 degrees for now, and we're hoping for more breaks, kind of like the one we got yesterday. Some cloud cover, anything will help. In your morning consumer headlines, an offer from JetBlue Airways to buy Spirit Airlines may ba back now on with the deal with Frontier is off the table. A merger of Spirit and Frontier was proposed in February, but it never won the full support of Spirit shareholders. The merger of the low-cost carriers would have created the nation's fifth largest airline. JetBlue has made an all-cash offer of $3.7 billion, significantly more than Frontier offered. Now, it's not clear yet how the Biden administration will respond to the proposal since it is calling for more competition in the airline industry. JetBlue believes its acquisition could make a national challenger to the four major airlines that now control 80% of U.S. air traffic.
Ford is flourishing. The company posted much better than expected profits and revenue in the second quarter. The auto industry has been struggling with supply chain problems and limited vehicle inventory. However, higher vehicle prices helped Ford achieve some admirable results. Ford's income, excluding special items, jumped to $2.7 billion. That's compared to the $510 million earned just a year earlier. And revenue from vehicle sales rose 57% to nearly $38 billion. And Sprite has been recognized for decades by its green cans and bottles, but Coca-Cola has announced it is retiring Sprite's green plastic bottles for more environmentally friendly clear ones. Now, Sprite's current plastic green polyethylene terephthalate has an additive that can be recycled. However, clear bottles can be recycled into new ones. The change will take effect starting in August, and other Coke beverages, including Fresca, Seagram's, and Mellow Yellow, will also be replaced with clear containers in the coming months. With those changes, Coke said it's projected to reduce about 20 million pounds of plastic in new plastic waste compared to 2019. 543, about 77 degrees. And stay with us. The San Antonio Humane Society has a furry friend that you'll want to meet next. Well, we have got just the sweetest little girl here oh, and the dog too. <laughs> Kenzie so from funny. the San Antonio Humane Society. Your the dog sweet is too. way so sweet. Dogs. Yes. <laughs> Who's this? This is Jenna. She is a one-year-old Australian mix. Um, she is just a sweet Would you dog. Face the camera? Would you yeah, face the like, camera? Come on. Yes. Yeah, so everybody can see you, sweet babies. And it's yeah. so funny, when they first walked up to the station they, here, she was, and oh. she kind of paused and was like, yeah, who are like, you? Who is this? And what I is this And I put my hand place? out, and now all of a sudden, she, we're just old buddies she's here. Like, so she's like, I want to play with you. She just made herself at yeah. home. I'll tell you what, if you want a walking, running partner, somebody this for the kids to play with. Perfect she, for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She's going to be great. She's going to be a great running partner. So a year old, still, still some puppy left in her. Oh, but, yeah. As yeah, you can but, tell, yeah, likes to play. Not going to get much bigger than that. And that breed of dog, easy to train. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah, easy to train, easy to be around, easy to take care of. So she's going to be great. What you got going on? So we have, this is the last week of our Bissell promo. Um, all of our adult dogs, including Sweet Jenna, is is uh, $50 and up. So adult dogs, adult cats, one year plus, $50 or more. All spay or $50, neuters, I'm sorry, all, all spay neuters. Yes, okay. $50, not $50 or more, okay. $50. $50. Yes, bucks. spay neuter. All of our dogs and cats are spay neutered, um, but when they go out for adoption. So yeah, come on and see us. You are worth every penny. She is. I'm going to get a face full of mouth. I know. Uh, if you have more information, <laughs> head over to the uh, San Antonio Tony Humane Society, 4004 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. 547. Time now to check back with Mike. I was looking at the TransGuy cameras. It looks like things are looking pretty good at this hour. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing really going on on any of the uh, TransGuy cameras. And that incident earlier this morning there on the uh, exit ramp, Wurzbach Parkway, eastbound over there by Vista del Norte, uh, Blanco Road area, that's not listed on the city's website anymore as uh, as an active incident. So it looks like that has uh, cleaned up. And again, that was not affecting any of the main lanes. There are 35 New Braunfels moving along pretty well. 410 at Callahan. Likewise, we haven't had a lot of, as soon as I say this and jinx it, but we haven't had a lot of problems the past few mornings. So maybe everybody's just kind of taking it easy. And some folks are on maybe vacation this week. Yeah. Something Everybody, to think about too. I mean, you know, school's getting back in and a lot right. of kids. You read my mind. Yeah, going uh, band practice, football, mm -hmm. you know, sort of more activity. And then over the next few weeks, the school gets back in. So it's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the traffic will start to pile on. Uh, yes, indeed. All right. Cloudy, a little bit cooler. You know, hey, one degree, we'll take it. 99 as opposed to 100 yesterday, officially out there at the airport. No rain uh, in that picture. And a lot of folks did not get any rain. That's going to be the situation again today. But couple more clouds, perhaps we'll keep temperatures down just, you know, if they're in the right spot, like right over the airport right there, keep temperatures down ever so slightly, maybe even in your backyard. Obviously, there's a uh, plane coming in this morning, landing, heading down to the southeast because the winds are coming in out of the southeast right now. And a couple of showers are showing up on radar right now. And this is obviously it's not going to have any impact on our weather this morning, but this is just the indication that we've got these little weaknesses, these little waves coming 
coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. We don't have that. The high pressure is not just like got a firm grip on everything right now. So at least we are seeing a couple of showers. Temperatures will stay in the upper 70s this morning. We'll have some of these clouds and, and you know, kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds like the situation yesterday. 90 at noon and yeah, going for 100 right now. A few more clouds. We stay at 99, 10% chance for one or two of those showers popping up around here. Uh, humidity dew points will be dropping down enough like they have the past couple of days to where it's fairly pleasant, tolerable in the uh, shadows and 101 heat index. So not anything just outrageously high, except of course, where we have those higher temperatures. Eagle Pass over toward Catula later on today. The computer model has again a couple of showers trying to pop up later on this afternoon. Again, one or two of them here or there. That's going to be about the extent of it. And then tomorrow, Probably the same situation, and this one actually tries to get some scared up by later on tomorrow evening. There's a couple of indications of that as well. I think that's kind of a wait and see situation just because by that time, obviously the sun's going to be down, we'll lose the afternoon heating, but that uh, will be definitely something to watch in portions of the hill country tomorrow. So the high is still pretty much in control. It has kind of, like I said, eased its grip ever so slightly, but it will still remain the dominant feature. And as is always the case, called the Bermuda High. It's all the way, stretches all the way over there toward the island of Bermuda in the Atlantic Ocean. So that will remain around here. Plus, then we get some of the uh, Saharan dust coming in for the weekend. We're still hoping for the overall pattern to give us coming to some of these waves moving on in here, maybe by next week. But as of again, I say maybe because nothing written in stone as far as any more of these uh, little minor rain chances. One thing, the uh, high may start to kind of strengthen ever so slightly by the middle of next week, putting temperatures up a couple more notches. We are going to be up to 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 100. So that's sort of the uh, the benchmark nowadays. And then a couple of more clouds. We stay just below that one or two of those showers primarily off to the east. And uh, right now we're still at day number 47 today with forecast 148 and one or two of those showers. By the way, Sunday we start the hottest period of the year as far as the normal high temperature 97 and then throw in the normal low temperature being the hottest starting on Tuesday. So you know what we call that, right? The mm. gift that keeps on giving, no matter what. <laughs> you know, it would be nice to get up to the hottest normal temperature. Right. Or get down to the hottest normal temperature. Right. You said, that. Yeah. You said 97 was a normal high? Starting on Sunday, yeah. Oh, wow. I know. We it's like a cold snap. That. We are the furthest thing from normal right now on multiple levels. And 551, about 77 degrees. A sidewalk strolling Chucky freaks out the internet and a team of typewriter musicians makes some mechanical melodies. Those stories are coming up next. Here are your lottery numbers as we get ready to play Mega for tomorrow night's big over $1 billion jackpot. Pick three, two, four, five, Fireball Zero. Daily four, three, two, eight, nine, Fireball Three. Cash five, four, 10, 11, 15, 31. A lot of Texas, six, eight, 10, 14, 44, 46. And your Powerball numbers, 1, 25, 44, 55, 57, Powerball 26, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we begin with a look at that prisoner swap potential. Uh, We're going to look at the development in the effort to free WNBA star Brittany Griner and ex-Marine Paul Whelan from Russia. We're going to hear from a top White House official on how this swap could happen. We also have an exclusive live interview with Paul's brother. And then shark encounters have been on the rise, especially for the East Coast. I'm going to track those sharks with these experts. We go and find great whites. I'm telling you, we saw 10. We got to tag one. It's an incredible journey you'll want to join us for. And then Gio's on his own journey to find the best burger in America. And he's showing up in Philadelphia with Miss Patty LaBelle. You don't want to miss Good Morning America. Doobity doo, just driving along and we go, what is that? That was basically the reaction of three Alabama women who spotted a life-size Chucky doll lurking in an Alabama neighborhood. Uh, for those of you who don't know Chucky, you're lucky. He was the murderous demon doll star of a series of horror movies that robbed an entire generation of its adolescence in the 80s and 90s. 
As for the Bama Beast Boy sighting, he was just a five-year-old neighborhood kid whose mom says he likes to play dress-up in last year's Halloween costume. That explanation didn't keep pics and vids of the freaky encounter from quickly going viral, along with the eyewitness's hilarious caption, Dear parents, get your kid. I almost had a heart attack. If you're a fan of the weird and wonderful, this next story will be music to your ears. These are the snappy sounds of the Boston Typewriter Orchestra, a group of musicians that are, how do I put this delicately? A bunch of weirdos that kind of like to bang on typewriters. Uh, yeah, that. These push-button percussive performers are gaining popularity, so if you're hosting a party, this keyboard clack and live act may be just your type. Finally, check out this teeny tiny electric cop car turning heads in Arkansas. Isn't it cute? Little Rock PD's Little Squad Car mainly works the riverfront park beat and maxes out at about 25 miles per hour. So while you won't see it chasing down bad guys on the highway, if you've got a sidewalk beef, this pint-sized policed paddy wagon will assuredly and hurriedly protect and serve with vim and verve. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, very latest on an overnight shooting on the northwest side. Katrina Weber will join us with details. Transcad right now, we had one incident earlier, but it's now cleared out on Worsback Parkway. We are now looking at 410 and Callahan. Things looking good. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. San Antonio police is starting their day with the search for a shooter. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That person took aim at a car, wounding a teenage girl. I'll tell you more about it. Wally, why are you putting that goop on your hair? It's not goop. It's Groomwell for the fastidious man. This morning, we're taking a look at the life and legacy of Tony Dow. The Leave it to Beaver star has died at the age of 77. And rise and shine, we're at 77 degrees right now, which is pretty tame compared to what we experience in the afternoon. We'll be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect today. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Sure does. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 28th of July. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had an awesome week. Yesterday was pretty cool for me because, you know, it wasn't that hot in some in some areas, at least. I was hanging out uh, out front yard talking to my neighbor yesterday, and I agree, even in the sun, it was uh, not quite as searing as it has been in recent weeks. It, thanks to the clouds, we did stay at 99 degrees. And yeah, and the other nice thing was, though, if you were outside and the clouds did provide some shade out there so because again we you know take all the temperatures in the shade you're in the direct sun it's like whoa you know it's like walking across the grocery store parking lot but uh the thing to though take into account is the fact that we did have clouds kept us only at 99 degrees so otherwise yes we would have been up to 100 so that seems to be kind of the benchmark these days with the uh, the sky conditions with the atmospheric conditions as well as the ground being so dry and heats up so easily uh looks like we're seeing the early morning glow right now the uh, sunrise and there is the planet Venus which is also rising we've got a couple of showers or had a few showers one or two of them left over well off to the east coast obviously not uh, any impact on our weather but the reason why I'm showing this is the fact that like yesterday we've got these little disturbances little waves coming in from the Gulf of Mexico so at least there is the chance albeit very small most of us don't see any rain once again today but we're not having that high pressure just push down on things. And with those, uh, you know, showers out there, maybe a few extra more clouds today, extra more. Yeah, uh, low amount of mold in the atmosphere. The updated count is going to come out in about an uh, hour and a half or so. 78 degrees and throughout the rest of the morning, we'll stay fairly steady. Decent breeze out there once again today. We will make it up to 90 today and then a high temperature. So going for 100 if we get, as I said, a few extra more clouds. Great grammar, Mike. Uh, we will stay just below that. And again, that decent breeze out there. One or two of those showers. About the same situation tomorrow. Weekend forecast coming up and we'll take a look ahead to first couple of days of August. Traffic authority right now. And uh, we had an incident in Wurzbach Parkway earlier this morning. That's not being listed on any of the uh, websites as a working incident right now. And otherwise, looking around town at some of the Transguide cameras there. 10 at Callahan. Everything's moving along very well. 35 Main Street here in downtown. 410 over there at Starcrest and just kind of scanning all the rest of the cameras. Nothing's going on, so just drive carefully this morning. 
Thank you, Mike. We want to go to late breaking news on the city's northeast side where we are hearing reports of a shooting. Jonathan Cota joins us live from the scene over on Harry Wurzbach. Jonathan, what can you tell us? Good morning, Mark. Well, right now I'm located on the 2000 block of Harry Wurzbach here in the city of Terrell Hills, not too far from Ritterman Road, where we know Terrell Hills Police Department has responded to reports of a shooting. Now, information is limited, but we do know the supervisor just made the scene. He has confirmed that one woman has been shot, but the details as to what led up to the shooting, of course, is under investigation right now. Terrell Hills Police on scene with the assistance of the San Antonio Police Department that you can see there on your distance as well, on your screen right now as well. But again, this is all under investigation. One woman confirmed to have been shot here this morning. We do know she's been taken to an area hospital. We're going to remain on scene and learn more details of exactly what led up to the shooting. And we'll update you as that information is made available. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. A teenage girl is in the hospital and San Antonio police are trying to figure out who put her there. They say she suffered a gunshot wound to the chest when someone fired into a car in which she was riding. Katrina Weber is live where the shooting happened on Woodstone near I-10. And Katrina, what is the latest on her condition? Well, the last word we had from police is that she was in critical condition, shot in the chest as she sat in the back seat of a car. Now, they were traveling here along Woodstone Road near I-10 when the shooting happened around 2.30 this morning. I have some video to show you what a widespread crime scene this was. Police had evidence markers, probably more than a dozen of them spread all across the parking lot here. They say this is where the shooting happened, but they found that victim down the road closer to De Zavala. She was one of three teenage girls, according to police, who were in the back seat of that car, which was being driven by a man. They were traveling along Woodstone, heading toward I-10, when another car pulled in front of them. Now, police had told us that they at first thought it was someone who they know, who, but uh, they later realized that was not the case when someone in that other car got out and started shooting. The driver of the car with the victim in it was able to go down to uh, toward De Zavala, pull into another parking lot there where police say he then put out all three of those teens who were in the back seat. And that is where uh, they were able to go and get help for that girl taken to a hospital in critical condition. Police have no description of the shooter other than that person was in some sort of a beige four door car. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. He was caught on camera pulling an employee's hair. Case and Investigates learned that Juan Cortez, who is a supervisor at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center, was allowed to return to work. That incident happened back in August of last year. Documents confirm firing Cortez was an option, but the punishment was shortened to just five days. The city says they stand by their discipline decision, and nearly a year later, police arrested Cortez on the assault charge. He is out of bond and is due in court next month. His attorney has not released a statement, but more women have come forward with more complaints against Cortez. San Antonio City Council now weighing its own response to the abortion battle. Leaders have now uh, have a new proposal aimed at limiting city funding when it comes to criminal cases for abortion. To be clear, the resolution won't make abortions legal in San Antonio, but could prevent city money from being used to store or catalog reports on abortions. The proposal would also recommend against using city funds to conduct surveillance on a person to find out if they had an abortion. City Council will debate the resolution next Tuesday at a special meeting. Cases of monkeypox are rising in San Antonio now has 11 cases. That's two more than yesterday. In the U.S., there are now 4,600 cases and now more doses of the vaccine are on the way. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says a plant in Denmark will supply more doses. Nearly 800,000 doses will soon be available for distribution. COVID cases are on the rise as well. It comes as children get ready to go back to class. According to health experts, it's likely many of these students will not be vaccinated against the coronavirus. We'll have more on this coming up the next half hour of GMSA. But right now, it's 6.07, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, alarming news for Facebook and its investors. The details are just ahead. Could Apple be ready to enter the electric car biz? We'll have more on that. The proposal that could bring Americans detained in Russia home. I'm Jay O'Brien, who the U.S. wants to trade for Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. Coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam right now, we are at 77 degrees and 
Mike says that some people off to the east might expect a stray shower here or there, but we will wait around and keep our fingers crossed. We go now to Tony Dow, the man who played Big Brother to the title character on the old school sitcom Leave It to Beaver. He's died at the age of 77. ABC's David Muir has more on the famed actor's life and career. He was Wally Cleaver in Leave It to Beaver. Tony Dow. Wally, why are you putting that goop on your hair? It's not goop. It's Groomwell for the fastidious man. Tony Dow playing Big Brother Wally, the star athlete, the Boy Scout in the 50s and 60s. Dow's family saying the actor has died. He had shared his cancer diagnosis earlier this year. Born in California in 1945, thrust into stardom at just 12 years old, learning he'd gotten the role of Wally over a hamburger. Dow growing up with Wally on TV, shaving for the first time. What do you do that for? Well, I don't know, but you're supposed to. Getting his license. He would go on to star in other TV shows like Lassie in 1968. His co-star Jerry Mathers, who played his brother Beaver, writing, Tony was not only my brother on TV, but in many ways in life as well. Tony was always the kindest, most generous, gentle, loving, sincere, and humble man. And it was my honor and privilege to be able to share memories together with him for 65 years. And welcome back. It's about 612. Now to Washington, where the U.S. is proposing a prisoner swap with Russia to bring home Americans Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. Sources tell ABC News uh, President Biden has approved trading an infamous Russian arms dealer to secure the two Americans' release. However, the Russians haven't agreed yet. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more from Washington. This morning, Russia is considering what the White House calls a substantial proposal to secure the release of American detainees Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan. Sources confirming to ABC News the U.S. is offering a prisoner swap, proposing trading infamous Russian arms dealer Victor Boot to bring the two Americans home. Boot, nicknamed the Merchant of Death, is currently serving a 25-year sentence at this federal prison in Illinois, convicted of selling weapons to terrorists. Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying he'll press for the potential deal with Russia's foreign minister later this week in their first call since Russia invaded Ukraine. We put a substantial proposal on the table weeks ago to facilitate their release. Our governments have communicated repeatedly and directly on that proposal. Paul Whelan, a former Marine, has been detained in Russia for more than three years, convicted on espionage charges, which he denies. I want to tell the world that I'm a, 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 a victim of political kidnap and ransom. And Brittany Griner, a WNBA star and two-time Olympic gold medalist, is accused of illegally bringing cannabis oil into Russia. In court again yesterday, Griner insisting she made a mistake. I did not plan or have the intent to bring any cannabis or banned substance to Russia. Testifying earlier this week, the basketball star jailed for more than five months, holding up pictures of her wife and teammates. Russia has suggested it wants to see Griner's trial play out before agreeing to any deal, but the U.S. and the Kremlin have done prisoner exchanges before, most recently bringing American Trevor Reed home. Last month, Reed and his parents told ABC News that trading Victor Boot would be worth it to bring Griner and Whelan home. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. In today's Tech Bytes, an unwanted first for Facebook and his parent company, Meta, the company just reported a quarterly decline in revenue for the first time ever. It's now seen profits drop for three straight quarters, and analysts say it's due to slowing of digital ad sales. And good news for gamers. A new study from Oxford University finds that time spent playing video games has no effect on mental health. A study tracked the actual gameplay of more than 40,000 individual players to come up with those results. Finally, Apple's apparently stepping up efforts to roll out its own self-driving electric vehicle. The company reportedly hired a veteran executive from Lamborghini. It would become the most senior, one of the most senior managers on the project and is expected to help lead to the design of the much anticipated Apple car. And it's no secret, Apple's actually been working on this in secret for many, many years now. I'm sure it'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. Right now, 616. Let's go ahead and check back with Mike. I didn't see any problems there on TransGuide. No, just everything's moving along very well. Looking at uh, some of the TransGuide cameras around there, 410 at Starcrest, uh, no problems there. And there's nothing being reported anywhere around town as of right now. We've got a couple of clouds that are hanging around here. Back to the Apple car. Yes. Remember the 
the one computer years ago was called the Macintosh. Yes. And why not name the, the different car models after the fruit? I'm thinking it's possible <laughs> they've already thought of that. So you're thinking, what, Fuji and... Honey Crisp, uh -huh. Granny, Granny Smith. Granny Smith. Granny Smith. Yeah. Yes. I like the Granny Smith one. Just it's a cute. thought. So. <laughs> Anything to keep our mind off of hot temperatures. Although we did stay at 99 yesterday. So, you know, we're everybody, who would have thought we'd be so happy to only hit 99 degrees? Put it that way. We're at 78 right now and a lot of uh, mid upper 70s all around the area. Mostly clear skies. A couple of clouds, though, as you saw in some of the Transguide cameras, uh, are showing up as of right now. 72 is the dew point, which means there's an okay amount of humidity out there when you uh, step outside, but it should be dropping down later on this afternoon. And so we won't have any heat index readings that are just going to be off the charts. Yeah, it looked like it was going to rain there, but nope, got left out again. At least those clouds moved on in and that helped keep temperatures. Beautiful view of the flag right there. Beautiful picture helped keep temperatures down at 99. So that's what we're dealing with right now. It's the the benchmark is 100. And then if something changes from that, we will stay below it instead of the other way around. We've got a couple of showers that have been showing up this morning. Obviously, they're not moving into our area, but at least this is an indication that we've got these waves kind of moving in from the Gulf of Mexico. And you can sort of see this on the uh, water vapor imagery and notice how it's this uh, kind of uh, this, this wave right like that. It's called an inverted trough, as we call it, because it is moving from east to west. And usually you think of troughs as being sort of U-shaped. Well, this one's sort of upside down, but since it's moving the other direction, this is what causes or can help with some of the uh, the rain. So at least we're getting some of these moving on in here from the Gulf of Mexico. So that's why we had a couple of showers yesterday. That's why we're going to have a couple of showers around the area today. Although the, the qualifier that is don't get excited about rain because most of us aren't going to be seeing anything. But a lot of folks will continue to see a few extra clouds hanging around here. So we'll be at 90 at noon again going for the, the benchmark today of 100. We keep a couple of extra clouds around. We stay just below that, and there's that 10% chance for one or two of those showers, which again, computer models aren't really too uh, bullish about any rain popping up later on today. You can probably count it on one hand as far as the number of showers we'll be getting today. About the same thing tomorrow, although this rapid update model does want to try and scare something up later on in the evening tomorrow night out there in the hill country, even after the, the heating of the afternoon. So uh, and kind of take that with a grain of salt as of right now. But if that does pop up, hey, some folks may get some uh, some free lawn watering out there in parts of the hill country, but no big big changes still to the overall pattern. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and high temperature 100. A stray shower off to the east. Keep a couple of more clouds around in your neighborhood, a little more comfortable and maybe even stay just below that 100 if we get a couple of extra clouds. And then over the next few days, yep, we're still going to continue to chalk up triple digits. Again, that's sort of the, the benchmark nowadays. And Sunday, we move into the Hottest time of the year as far as high temperatures, 97 is the average high temperature all the way through the 16th then of August. And then on Tuesday, it's the warmest time as far as the average low temperatures. Yeah. And we'd be happy to get down to normal <laughs> these days. So. That would be great to yeah. be back to normal. Usually that's not a time to look forward to, but if we could get down there, that'd be perfect. Yeah, we'll take it at this point. Thank I'm you, Mike. Though. This just into our newsroom, uh, big breaking business news. JetBlue has officially announced it will buy Spirit Airlines, but does not involve Sprite bottles. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's going to buy Spirit Airlines for $3.8 billion. The move will create the nation's fifth largest airline. JetBlue believes, <clears throat> excuse me, this acquisition could make it a national challenger to the other major airlines and now control 80% of U.S. air traffic. That's right. A merger of Spirit and Frontier was proposed back in February, but it never won the full support of Spirit shareholders. More on that Sprite story later, hopefully. 620, 77 degrees. And you're not going to believe how long it's been since a diamond this big was found. We're going to tell you how big it was and where it was discovered coming up on GMSA. It takes energy to take on the world. So whether you're breaking a sweat, breaking down barriers, or breaking the laws of gravity. Keep moving with the ultimate energy bar. We bake in delicious, wholesome ingredients, purposefully crafted with a blend of protein, fat, and carbs. Because the more good you put in, the more great you get out. Cliff, baked in goodness. Now introducing Cliff Thins, a crispy, craveable 100-calorie snack. 
nurse Mariam Sabo knows a moment this pure demands a lotion this pure. Gold Bond Pure Moisture Lotion. 24-hour hydration. No parabens, dyes, or fragrances. Gold Bond. Champion your skin. Just between us, cleaning with a mop and bucket is such a hassle. Ugh. Well, I switched to Swiffer WetJet, and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one that absorbs dirt and grime deep inside. And it helps prevent streaks and haze. Stop cleaning and start Swiffering. In this morning's GMA First Look, pop superstar Shawn Mendes calling off the rest of his Wonder World Tour to focus on his mental health. The singer-songwriter writing in a note to fans, As you guys know, I had to postpone the past few weeks of shows since I wasn't totally prepared for the toll that being back on the road would take on me. After speaking more with my team and working with an incredible group of health professionals, it has become more clear that I need to take the time I've never taken personally. Mendez has been candid about his mental health struggles in the past, opening up about them in his 2018 hit In My Blood. Laying on the bathroom floor, feeling nothing. I'm overwhelmed and insecure. The star now taking the time to face his challenges head on. It's important for individuals to recognize that they need time off without guilt and without shame. And we'll have more on when the superstar might return to the stage coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Camping with KZAN, powered by Davis Law Firm. The first official day of practice in Oxnard for the Cowboys is in the books, and one of the first stars to hit the field was Zeke Elliott. He headed right into the fan zone to give some love. He's coming off another 1,000-yard rushing season. That's despite having to play the last three months with a nagging injury to his right knee. Now he says he is reporting to camp 100%, but not without cause for concern before. You know, I was a little, a little worried uh, at the beginning of the offseason. I'm like, dang, you know, this thing still kind of feels a little, a little iffy. But uh, I'll say probably, you know, a month or two into the offseason, a month or two getting back into work. And, uh, and uh, I'll say, you know, probably by the time OTAs hit, um, I, I was back 100. Here's a look at what's in store for the Cowboys for the rest of the week. Opening ceremony will kick off Saturday. Then on Sunday, Jerry Jones will join the sports guys live on instant replay. You don't want to miss that. Of course, we have a crew in Oxnard for training camp. Look for more coverage today in our later newscasts. And here, this may be the largest pink diamond found in 300 years. According to the Australian miner Lukapa Diamond Company, the 170 carat gemstone named the Lulo Rose was found in Africa. It is expected to be auctioned off by an Angolan state diamond marketing company. 170 carats. Yes. Good Lord. Okay. 627, about 77 degrees. And ahead in our next half hour, three people in the hospital after a rollover crash on the city's north side. We're going to have the latest on their conditions. A teenage girl has gone from the back seat of a car to the back of an ambulance. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say she was hit by gunfire that was sprayed into her car. I'll tell you more about it. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. There are two serious issues our military men and women are facing right now, and that's unemployment and underemployment. Coming up on JMSA, we'll tell you exactly what we mean by underemployment and what resources are available to veterans and transitioning service members. The sun is up and so are you. Thanks for joining us for GMSA. Good morning, it is Thursday, July 28th. Yes. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, I hope those clouds we saw out there, I hope they stick around. Well, there's not many out there right no. now, but anything helps. Of course, the nice thing about yesterday is the temperature was held in check and a few people, and we're talking like maybe three or four, yeah. saw a shower or two <laughs> yesterday. And that'll be the situation again today. And yeah, we had enough clouds out there to keep us at one at 99, almost at 100, just because I'm used to saying that. But um, and that's the the thing, though, uh, forecast today, I'm going for 100 again. And we stayed at 99 only because we had some of those extra clouds out there. So the way with the soil so, so dry and everything shaping up in the atmosphere, it's like 100 is now the the benchmark, if you will. And do we vary from there? We've got 
got some clouds out there right now. We'll see a few more later on uh, today and even a few more this morning. 72 is the dew point. Temperature is 78 degrees. Normal low is 75, so above that and, you know, enough humidity when you uh, step outside. A couple of showers, well, almost have completely fizzled on out, but the only reason why I show this is because, yes, we do have similar situation to yesterday where we don't have the, the that dome of high pressure just pushing down in the atmosphere and we've got these little disturbances trying to slide on here from the Gulf of Mexico. Hence the reason why we got some extra clouds as well as one or two of those showers. Mold is on the low side this morning and uh, warm humid, you know, a couple of clouds out there and then a shower or two primarily off to the east 100 again today and then other than yesterday, 100 again, like every other day, it seems like this year and or this summer and breezy conditions today with southeasterly wind about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow, the same thing. And then over the weekend, it's still going to be hot. Take out the chance of any rain over the weekend, and then we will have some Saharan dust moving on in here. All the details on that and the first couple of days of August. Yep, new month begins on Monday. That in just a few minutes. Traffic Authority right now. At last check, nothing was really going on around the area. 410 over there at Starcrest. Everything's moving along very well. And same thing over there, 35 at Randolph. Obviously, you can see some of the traffic is picking up. 1604, at, wow, almost looks like a holiday over there. 1604 at Pat Booker. And just another scan. Well, one incident, uh, 410 at Marbach. We do have first responders on the scene over there, but it doesn't look like anything... Uh, too big as of right now. Just kind of be on the. Truck, pardon me. That's a hero truck. Oh, it's a hero truck. Okay, yes, mm -hmm. couldn't see it that well, but uh, just kind of watch out for that. 90 to 36th traffic is starting to uh, pick up a little bit more. Thank you, Mike. We want to get back to that late breaking news this morning. Reports of a shooting on the city's northeast side. Jonathan Cotto is there at the scene on Harry Wurzbach. Jonathan, what do we know so far? Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. Well, right now I'm located off of the 2000 block of Harry Worsbach here in the city of Terrell Hills, not too far from Ritterman Road. I can tell you the scene is dwindling down now to about two police units, but it's still very much active. We're waiting to hear from the supervisor to learn exactly what took place here, but we do know one woman has been shot. Now, Mark and Stephanie, I can talk to you a little bit about what I've been able to see here this morning. Two men have been placed in handcuffs and taken into custody for questioning, but we're we're still learning the exact details as to their involvement in this shooting. I can tell you that woman has been taken to an area hospital. She is uh, expected to be okay from what we've been told right now. Uh, but again, we are waiting to hear from the supervisor here on scene to learn a little bit more about what took place here this morning. Police responded shortly after three o'clock. But of course, this is information that's developing and we're going to bring you the latest as it's made available. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. Police have a lot of questions about an overnight shooting on the northwest side, beginning with who pulled the trigger more than a dozen times. One of the bullets hit a teenage girl in the chest. She was sitting in the backseat of a car at the time, riding along Woodstone near I-10. Katrina Weber is live where this happened. And Katrina, what did police know about how it happened? Well, they tell us that girl was in that car with three other people. They were riding here along Woodstone, headed toward I-10, when someone in another car got out and started shooting. Now, according to police, this happened around 2.30 this morning, and they turned this entire parking lot into a crime scene, as you'll see in the video. A police had roped off this whole area as they searched for clues. They did find more than a dozen shell casings. They marked those off in one part of the parking lot. They scattered out and started searching this whole area for whoever did the shooting. Police say that the people in the car told them that they were driving here along Woodstone when another car pulled in front of them. They thought it was someone who they knew at first, but then that person started shooting. Now, there were three teenage girls in the back seat, and according to police, one man in the front of the car. One girl in the back seat was hit. After the shooting, police say the man who was driving went down the road toward De Zavala and put all three teens out of the car and then took off. The police found that teenage girl who was shot in that other parking lot, rushed her to a hospital. They told us she was in critical condition with a gunshot wound in her chest. They have not found uh, the person who did the shooting. The only thing they knew is that person was in some sort of a beige four-door car, and that is where the investigation ends at this point. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office says a 76 year old man accused of sexually abusing a child over the course of several years is now in custody. BCSO says back in May, the child reported the incident, accusing the suspect, Gilbert Casanova, of sexual assault. After an investigation, Bear County deputies arrested Casanova Tuesday. Investigators say they also found Casanova was in possession of and had distributed child pornography. He faces a charge of continuous sexual abuse of a child, a first degree felony. Casanova is now in the Bear County Jail on a $100,000 bond. The investigation into this case is ongoing. Also new this morning, three people in the hospital after a rollover crash on the north side. This was big news earlier on our newscast. Happened a little after 3 a.m. Police say a vehicle exiting Wurzbach Parkway on Vista del Norte rolled into some trees, trapping the three passengers inside the vehicle. They were cut free and taken to a hospital. All of them are expected to be okay. Officers say speed led to that rollover. One man is now facing punishment after being found guilty of trafficking a 16 year old girl back in 2020. Today begins the punishment phase in the trial of Xavier Green. The teen victim is now 18. She took the stand this week saying she ran away from home and met Green and another man. She says they took her to an abandoned apartment off of Blanco Road and eventually forced her into prostitution. Green's lawyer had argued that the teen lied about her age and was never held against her will. The other man involved in this case has already taken a plea deal. From a viral prank to trouble with the law, four kids stopped for using a type of water gun that shoots gel beads. Bear County deputies say while they look harmless, they can cause injuries. Sheriff's Office says a TikTok trend as kids doing drive-bys with water guns shooting at people. This week they caught a 15-year-old and two 14-year-olds and an 11-year-old all in a parent's car that was seized. Two of the minors now face charges of injury to a child, a felony along with assault bodily injury, a Class A misdemeanor. Economists will be looking closely at today's Commerce Department GDP report for key signs on the health of the nation's economy. The U.S. might register a second straight quarter of economic contraction, meaning a possible recession. However, the White House is citing the country's growth in job creation and the falling unemployment rate as signs we are not heading into recession. Today's economic numbers come as the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point yesterday in an effort to tame inflation. Front and center in the lives of so many transitioning service members and veterans is the massive problem of unemployment and underemployment. Experts say the Bureau of Labor Statistics is falling short in accurately reporting the veteran unemployment rate for a number of reasons, but the issue many vets are facing right now, they're not landing the jobs they're qualified for. Our Jonathan Goto explains this problem and what some nonprofit organizations are doing to provide a solution. Recent data from the Veterans Metric Initiative shows that a combined underemployment and unemployment rate for transitioning service members and veterans is at a staggering 61%. But what does underemployment actually mean? We mean people working beneath their objective skill set and experience. So they're getting paid less than they should um, for the experience they have and for the education they have. Goldenberg says underemployment is a growing societal problem that is hitting veterans especially hard. We noticed that we were hearing anecdotally from veterans, hey, I got a job, I've got two jobs, but I can't pay the rent because I can't get enough hours. You know, on the one hand, they're employed, but on the other hand, they're not employed in a quality manner such that they can, you know, pay the rent. One of the most requested services from transitioning service members and veterans is employment support. But to make matters worse. But when it comes to employment, I'm learning here that it is the lowest funded of any veteran program area. Why is that? Yeah, that's correct. So if you take the entire US government veteran spend, which is about $300 billion, less than one tenth of 1% of that spend, less than one tenth of 1% goes to employment, which is kind of crazy for a lot of reasons. So according to Goldberg, if we can get veterans into high quality jobs, their need for other high cost services requiring government funding support goes way down. So it's a force multiplier. If we can, you know, spend a little bit of money, you, if we doubled it to two tenths of one percent of the federal veterans fund, we would double the amount of support we could give veterans in landing those high quality jobs. Reporting Jonathan Corto, KSAT 12 News. Time check 641, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, what health experts are saying about coronavirus and the classroom, the latest right after the break. 
645 August, of course, right around the corner. That means millions of children will be returning to classrooms. This comes as COVID-19 cases are rising again, fueled by the BA5 subvariant. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, new research shows many of these students are still not fully vaccinated against the virus. School is back in session in Newington, Connecticut, where students and teachers were greeted with signs saying facial coverings are necessary for most of the day. Coming back, it's going to be great to see them and their smiling faces Well, when we take mass breaks, but um, to, just to get to learn with them instead of being through a computer face-to-face. -face. According to a new CNN analysis, less than 50% of children and teenagers are fully vaccinated against COVID-19, with only about 10% getting booster shots. That's a trend the Biden administration would like to change. Every person age five and over should get a booster shot. But a survey released Tuesday by KFF shows 37% of parents with children between five and 11 years old say they will not get their kids vaccinated. 28% of those with 12 to 17 year olds say the same. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization is calling on people of all ages to roll up their sleeves. If significant numbers of health workers, older people, and other at-risk groups remain unvaccinated, deaths will continue, health systems will remain under pressure, and the global recovery will be at risk. This is not theoretical. This is real. I'm John Lawrence reporting. All right, 647. And I'm looking at the TransGuy cameras at Highway 90 and 36th Street. A few more vehicles on the roadways, but uh, still no problems that we can see from here. No, everything's uh, seems moving along, moving along pretty well. That's the only real, uh, well, I guess, buildup of traffic as we uh, get into the heart of the morning commute. Couple other stops: 90 at Medio Creek, uh, not bad. 410 Starcrest, everything's moving along very well. 410 at Marbach, same situation out there. So do drive carefully. 35 at Randolph, starting to build a uh, ever so slightly out there. Like the tie, Mike. Everybody kind of got the royal blue memo yeah. today. You two match. Very exactly. nice. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like you're going to the prom or something like that. So. Well, Aww. depends on the, the where they put us in the studio. Some of them <laughs> do look like a prom shot. Yes. I love this picture. Can you name the band that that's a quote from? I want to know, have you ever seen The Rain? Uh, oh. That's that's OK. Classic rock. Yep. Yes. Uh, Bob Seger. Nope. No. OK. Any other well, guesses? Don said clear, uh, what? Credence? No. Cre oh, Credence. Oh, CCR. Yeah, Thank Credence you. Clearwater Revival. Credence CCR, yep. Can you sing, can you sing it? I, I can, but due to copyright issues, uh -huh. um, it's not recommended. <laughs> Okay. Music Aww. rights. He's no yeah. fun. Anyway, got some clouds that have moved on in here right now. We had some clear skies overnight. And uh, so that's going to hold temperatures fairly steady. And once again, we are talking about, hey, once ago, oh, here we go. It's hidden right back there. I found it again. My other clicker. So got to have two of these things. It's like having all the remotes. It's your in your couch in the living room right there. So we're going to have a few more uh, areas of some Saharan dust coming in here over the weekend, and that'll be sticking around tomorrow. So overnight, tomorrow night into Saturday, we'll start to see that Saharan dust move in, and then it does not look like it's going to be sticking around all that long, just throughout a better portion of the day on Sunday, and then that will move on out. So we'll have those very, very, very pronounced reddish uh, sunrises and sunsets over the weekend. 78 degrees right now, 79 in. Astroville and uh, throughout the day, of course, we keep some of these clouds around here. And if they, of course, stick around, then we don't hit 100. But that's the kind of the, the odd thing with this forecast we will be at 90 at noon, of course. But 100 is now the benchmark, just as I've been saying all morning long, given what's going on in the atmosphere. And so the ground is so, so dry. So that's what we shoot for. And then the variations off of that, you keep more clouds around like the situation yesterday. The only reason why we stayed at 99 was because we had those clouds around. Otherwise, we would have hit 100 again. 10% chance for a couple of uh, showers out there, which computer models, yeah, one or two of them, kind of like yesterday, maybe a few extra clouds around here, which would be obviously very nice. And then same thing tomorrow, we'll have a couple of extra clouds around and then one or two of those showers. Matter of fact, this model wants to get something uh, scared up there in the hill country as we go on in toward the uh, evening hours. Right now, we've got well, a couple of clouds hanging around here. We had some of these showers off to the east of us, and we still have these little waves coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico. And so 
that's what is moving on in. That's what gives us that very small chance for one or two of the showers around here, but not anything that really you need to write home about. There'll be, you know, few and far between at best on the big picture. Everything moving straight to the east up to the north of us. And then here's that huge clockwise rotation. That's the the high, which is sitting right on top of us, but it doesn't have a as firm of a grip right now. So that's what's allowing some of those showers to pop up around here. 90 at noon and then 100 for a high temperature. One or two showers scattered about the area and then going into the next uh, seven days. Still again, the benchmark right now is basically 100. Do we vary from that today and tomorrow would probably be the best opportunity to like yesterday have a couple of extra clouds stay at maybe 98 99 degrees but uh, all the way through the weekend and then going into next week it looks like we are going to start to heat up which would kind of go along with the calendar a little bit since that's the hottest time of the year historically although it would be roughly five degrees above normal wow. by tuesday wednesday I, I still propose listing it as 99 and and will it to happen <laughs> in, in a way okay so it could because it, it worked yesterday yeah. right right yeah so, yeah so sort of like getting your car washed and then it rains exactly kind of, kind yes of yes now well, you're maybe thinking. if i say 100 then it will stay at 99. Yeah. That might also work too. It Let's all falls in your hands, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 651, about 77 degrees. We don't know what's happening. The migrating monarch was officially put on the endangered species list last week, so what can be done about it now? I'm Sarah Costa coming up tomorrow on GMSA. What to plant to help save the monarchs and how to do it. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Let's look outside. With Hi, Lincoln. everybody. We're back temporarily. <laughs> look at that cloud cover. Let's enjoy that for right now. 77 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. I'm located on the 2000 block of Harry Wurstbach, not too far from Ritterman Road in the city of Terrell Hills, where we've been at the scene of a shooting all morning long. Latest update from the supervisor on scene, letting us know that the woman shot here this morning is now dead. Now, investigators are trying to piece together what exactly led up to this shooting. We know the two men who were previously in handcuffs are witnesses to what took place here this morning. Right now, investigators are trying to determine the victim's age and what exactly happened here. But of course, this is a story that you can follow on our website, KSET.com. Reporting live from the city's northeast side, Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. Here's a quick check of traffic around the area and things are moving along fairly well around town and a couple of more uh, quick stops and you can see 410 Starcrest pretty good there. We got a little bit of sunshine squeezing through the uh, clouds and we'll have a high temperature today up to 100. Hopefully we keep some clouds around. Sounds good. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you back here at nine. GMA is next.